again. Hello and welcome to the Fisher Protocol, uh, the show where saying the Who is the greatest rock and roll band of all time is not subjective, but everything else is. Please take a quick second to like and subscribe and um, share with your Who-minded friends. Who-minded friends. Uh, uh, the Who is a passion of ours. This is more of a personal journey and no money is made from these videos, so liking and subscribing lets us know we're not alone in Who Land, because it can be lonely sometimes in Who Land. When your polls come up on the internet and they say, who's your favorite band, Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, or The Beatles, it gets lonely in Who Land. And we're <laughs> on a corner and we need a quarter, please. So liking and subscribing lets us know we're not alone in Who Land. Constructive feedback is always welcome. Either in the comments below or you can follow me as I spout Who-related content on Twitter and Instagram at Fisher Protocol. Betts is uh, Disco underscore Remix yeah. uh, on uh, Twitter. Tom is uh, better than all you people that are on Twitter. And um, <laughs> I am Ethan. This is Tom. This is Betts. They're my uh, best two friends. We don't claim to be experts, just three fans who like to talk about the greatest rock and roll band of all time, The Who. What up, y'all? Not What's much. What's going on? Um, not much. We're going to talk about my favorite section of The Who to talk about because I, I love it so much is this uh, post Quadrophenia 96 97 Who. Um, so, uh, so, uh, Endless wire haters. See you later. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, I've done a lot of endless wire defending this week. A lot of it. Um, yeah. It's neither here nor there. Today we're going to talk about the 1999 live album, The Blues to the Bush. Um, after the Quadrophenia shows of 1996-97, The Who regrouped as a five-piece with Zach Starkey and John Rabbit Bundrick for the first time since the Live Aid era for seven shows. The big iBash show in Vegas was the first one, an internet hoax in the end. It was released under the name The Vegas Job, which is here. Um, yep. They did two more shows in California. Those were uh, Bridge School Benefit acoustic shows, which I have under this completely official release. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on video. Um, um, and they did two shows in in Chicago and two at the House of Blues and two shows before Christmas at the Shepherd's Bush Empire. This is uh, supposedly a document of those shows. Um, the general reaction to the CD released from musicmaker.com was mixed to negative, feel, most people feeling that the album was a mishmash of overdubs and considered mixed very poorly. Um, I disagree. I love this album. I remember exactly where I was when I got it. It also laid the groundwork for the band, what the band would do in 2000, culminating in their appearance at the concert for New York in 2001. Um, and also, when I start talking about some of the music on the album, I will uh, talk about a big deal for me on the album, which is Pete's kind of new guitar rig that he introduced here. Um, have you guys, uh, Betts, we'll start with you. Have you um, heard this album before, and do you have any history with it? I, I knew I knew about its existence, but until, until you know you you pointed it out to me, I hadn't heard it before. But man, I loved it. I this was really really fun, a fun record. Tom, I I did not hear of it. I had not had it until you sent me a copy of it a couple of years ago, um, and then for a long time it was like in my car collection of. Uh, CDs that I'd rotate through if I ran out of podcasts or something to listen to. Um, and I listened to it a lot, uh, you know, switching between discs. But uh, yeah, I do like the album uh, quite a bit. It's pretty good. Um, this is where I'll, I'll go on a little bit because what we're doing is we're doing these in chunks and I get the first chunk I'm going to talk about. I can't explain Substitute Anyway, Anyhow, Anywhere and Pinball Wizard. All songs I wrote. So um, when I got this album, I was heady in my, uh, uh, in, in my early rave days and I would, I was at this house party and I've told this story a lot, so I'll, I'll tell it again. Cause it's really pertinent to this album. As you can tell, it's the CD I have that is signed by all three members of this band. Uh, Ted, as we call him back then, the who right there it says to Ethan Pete Towns and it's all on the blues to the bush. Uh, my very best friend, Jennifer, she worked for musicmaker.com. She was able to uh, get backstage and get me those autographs. Thank you very much again. Um, but she also, like, when, you know, it was a dot com and those went under very quickly. And uh, she was able to uh, walk out of that place with, like, oh, I took these 20 copies of the Blues to the Bush. You want them? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And if I had been smart, I would not have given most of them away. I would have saved them till right now and sold them all. But I gave them away. So there you go. Um, but she brought it to me when we were at this house party. And, you know, she said, don't buy it. I'll bring you a copy. Because, you know, I'm first there to, you know, buy whatever. And she brought it to me. And I, I was on the couch. And I remember she gave it to me. And I leapt up like three feet. Just like I've never been so weightless in my life. And I ran upstairs to the CD player to listen to it. And it's... Roger Daltrey screaming, we're home, and then launching into a great I Can't Explain. Um, and it's the I Can't Explain that I like to listen to the most. Um, now, there is uh, someone I'm in contact with on Facebook. His name is Ivy Rodriguez. And a long time ago, he had posted, you know, where he detailed where he listened to, he thought things were overdubbed or from different nights. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into that but I just want to point out that he did do that research and that's kind of important research to do. I'm not going to do this for every song. It does note that a lot of these first ones are overdubs. There's some overdubs in there. I don't really care about that stuff because it doesn't make my enjoyment any less of oh. the album. But um, let's get back to the songs. I Can't Explain, Substitute, Any Way, Anyhow, Anywhere are the three songs that for the first time after Quadrophenia, I saw The Who that they would always open with. I think it, before 2006. I think in 2006 they started using The Seeker in that place for Substitute, mm -hmm. um, which was a bummer for me. Um, and it's the best way to open any concert. It's the only song I want to hear when a concert starts is I Can't Explain. You know what I mean? Um, and I yeah. don't think that's going on on the tour coming up, which is, makes me a little sad. But that's how I know I'm at a Who concert. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm like, yes, let's, let's get the show on the road. What I will say about Pinball Wizard is a great... Um, show off for Pete's new guitar rig which I've talked numerous times with this about with his piezo pickup and everything and easily turn up the mid and the gain for the chorus of short plays of mean pinball I could go on forever about this but I won't I just I love this album and I love those first four songs what do you guys think of those opening songs strong set and like you said it's kind of what you want to hear when you're here going to a who show um yeah, and I love that version of Can't Explain. Um, just the bass, John's, you know, really take it to the next level, and there's some ferocity behind the playing. Yeah, it's a strong opening set for sure. That's, that's anything? I, I saw him in 2000, so I saw him right after this. And, um, you know, I had been in the, the punk and uh, goth, trenches for a while and I came back to them to to this and uh the sound is it's just five guys it's stripped down and and they sound happy which is a big deal for those guys um it all sounds just great it's just it just blasts you into this whole communal thing that you know we as who fans kind of share with the band we're all in it together and they're it's it, this is I like this record really like this record so yeah, and it's really interesting, especially when, you know, 89 was all the basically deep end acoustic. Yeah. And, you know, quadru Quadrophenia, like, towards the end, Pete started breaking out the electric more and more. Like, I know when it got really big deal towards the end of 97, he would start breaking it out for The Rock and play it for The Rock and Love Rain Over Me and then into the other stuff. So the fact that he decided to come back, you know, Simon wasn't with them full time yet, and it was just him providing all the guitar noise that he used to do for the who all the time is it was very exciting it was very yeah. exciting um so we're gonna go to bets to talk about my wife bob o'reilly pure and easy and you better you bet thank you for giving me my wife because you know i am a why what my wife connoisseur and i think that's how we met was because i was like brigading you with massive amounts of my wife memes all summer long <laughs> seven and a half minutes guys seven and a half minutes of my wife what can i say um love it i've Really appreciate Allison and Twistle bullying her husband into writing this song because I love my wife. Um, one thing I one thing I really like about this, and um, it was something they did in 2000 that I wasn't expecting, was they kind of let John kind of wild out, you know, on the bass and everything. With nice wild out, kind of relatively speaking, but um, it's just seven and a half minutes of bliss for me. I love love this record. Uh, lover of the song, rather, and I love this version of it. And like I said, you gave me seven and a half minutes of it, so yeah. I think I think the one here that I 
watched yesterday to get familiar with the set was 11. Uh -huh. And there's a lot more trial and error, but it's a very good version. Cool. Well, it's, it's, it's in my top five versions of my wife. So Nice. Well done. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> um, Baba, you know, you hear the, that synthesizer loop, and it's just, it's chills. It's chills. Um, Rabbit on this, let me give some shout out to Rabbit because I feel like that dude just like punishes these keyboards. Um, he's all over this record. I wish he was back, you know? I mean, I don't know what happened there, but um, Rabbit's, this is kind of Rabbit's show too. Really great, swirly keyboards and just beating the hell out of those things. So, you know, um, and you better, you bet. I like you better, you bet. Um, I don't know. Some people don't like it. They don't like bass dances. Um, I think it's a fun, sexy kind of song. Um, they did a great job on it. Roger loves singing it. I will say that. And I, and I have one more thing to say about that, which is, um, for, I don't know. I kind of caught this, but I feel like the bass sounds like bed springs kind of bouncing, <laughs> which is very <laughs> apropos for this song. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's like it's like pure Pete Townsend pop in the way that like, let which he was doing a lot of. Let yeah. my love open the door is, and I, yeah. I always put those songs together because they're the purest form of three chord pop music that exploded when they were released, and it's one of their biggest hits, and it's never not going to be played. So yeah, exactly. I, I, it's a great song. It reminds me of the summer of '82. So going to the beach with the bestie and all that kind of thing. Um, Won't Get Fooled Again, um, again, fantastic song. Of course, I always say my version starts out with boom, boom, boom. Well, wait, hold, a second, is... hold a second. We're going to go in order of the album. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. So that that's on the second. Oh, I, got, I went too far. I went too yeah, far. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, the only thing I'll say about the other about that group of songs is the fact that Pure and Easy was on the CD was just amazing to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What do you think about Pure and Easy there, Tom? Yeah, I mean, just to have that song anytime is is magical, and I, uh, I'll never not like that song. You know, it's um, I think yeah, the even the worst version is probably still pretty darn good. So it's just it's an incredible song, and it's hard to beat no matter what. So just to have it was, I love it. I was really bummed that they didn't carry on with it too much. Yeah, uh, when they went on two thousand, um, what they put in its place was stuff like bargain relay. I don't know myself occasional i'm one you know what i mean and what i loved about this 1999 2000 tour thing they went on is pete talks about his three-part show well you know the three-part show for for this particular tour was just deep cuts of who stuff i wanted to hear like i don't right. know myself and, <laughs> and stuff like that so that's that's why i liked it so much but uh tom the next uh, section was i'm a boy getting in tune the real me and behind blue eyes yeah so um, I'm a boy, just, I think it's, it's nice to have that poke its head out into, uh, live who music. Um, John plays really well, uh, adding a lot to that song. Um, the mix, uh, you know, I wish there was a little bit more guitar there, but, um, uh, that's all right. And the, I don't know, it, it seemed like it was lacking just a little bit of energy, but, um, you know, you just kind of went on this tear through the last few songs. So, uh, you bring it down a little bit, I guess it's all right. There's no issues there. Um, getting in tune, another magical John song. Um, he's really working it, uh, just playing beautiful bass. Uh, the whole band is really tight. Rapper, rabbit sounds great. Um, that's, that's another song. I just have a hard time not listening to the bass. Um, just because what John's doing just playing all over the place, but not in his usual, like, in-your-face kind of uh, playing. Um, yeah, and, and Pete's got a nice solo in there. And, yeah, I, I really love that version of that song. Um, and I just love that song in general, too. Um, the Real Me, Zach, is, is on fire, does a great job. The thing I, th I think I noticed the most about this song uh, was just kind of how maybe Pete's playing is so much different when John's in the band as opposed to like what they sound like now uh, or since John passed away. I think Pete's playing is 
vastly different and he can kind of sit back and not relax but pick and choose what he wants to play uh-huh. especially when John's in the band but now he's got to he's got to push a little bit more um I don't know if it's my favorite version of the real me but John and Atlas were playing bass I'm good uh and then behind blue eyes uh the vocals Pete and Roger really crush it um Pete, I don't, I don't know how he never misses a note on the, any of the times he plays this. Maybe there's an overdub in there. I don't know. But he always seems to play really well. Um, yeah, great, great version of that song. It's, you know, I always love the uh, the ending of that song, too. So it just brings the energy. I just, what I was saying was um, in regards to, like, the real me or getting in tune, like, they're still, they're trying things out for this new form of the band. And, um, you know, they had done the real me on the Quadrophenia tour, but it wasn't like just Pete on guitar. So, you know, yeah. I always like hearing that stuff. Um, so the next section is Magic Bus, Boris the Spider, and After the Fire. Um, and I like I like the versions. I don't know if I'm a fan of later day Magic Buses in general, but, you know, I like it. Um, Boris sounded like Boris. Uh, Betsy, do you have anything to say about this Boris? Was it a special Boris for you? It's always a special Boris for me. <laughs> it's, it was a good one. It, it's a solid tens across the board Boris. What can I say? It's a crowd pleaser and everybody loves it. I don't know. One day, you know, he's going to make him feel so small. <laughs> ten feet I wonder tall. when the last Boris was played. Huh? I wonder when the last Boris the Spider was played. Because it's got to be right around this time frame, right? Yeah. I can't remember if they did it in 2000 or not, to be honest with you. I can't remember if they did. Uh, that's something I'll look up in a minute. Um, yeah. It might be, could be as late as you know Watford in 2002. You never know. Um, yeah. Uh, but the big, uh, I think the big highlight here is this after the fire. You know what I mean? It's like... It's gold. I don't know why they didn't do it after this. I don't know if people considered it a, a bathroom song or something like that, and they noticed that, and they didn't do it. I, I absolutely love it. It's a Roger Daltrey solo song written by Pete Townsend. So why wouldn't the Who do it? It makes perfect sense, um, and I love this version of it, and I didn't think I would love a song that much that had the name Dom DeLuise in it, and I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I don't know That's if you guys good. have anything to say about After the Fire. So good. It's mm-hmm. cream of the crop as far as songs from these guys. I don't know why. I love it. And I always put it with Stop Hurting People or The Sea Refuses No River. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In yeah. those type of songs. I just love it. I think it's one of those type of songs. I wasn't expecting to hear it, and I, what a what a pleasure that was. I, that was, I think, this is that's one of my favorite songs on this whole series of concerts. I love it, and just because it's so rare and it's and, it's, and it sounded good, yeah. and it was and it was with the Who, so it wasn't like you had all this deep end backing stuff, which is great. But you know, it sounded like you know, especially with John on bass, it just sounded really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so two songs no one's ever heard of, Tom. It's called uh, "Who Are You" and Five Fifteen. <laughs> I, heard, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mean to give you the the, the lesser known the B sides. The, obscur- the obscurities. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, who are you? I I thought it was pretty uh, standard version. You know, any any time it's a song with a synthesizer, there's not too much to stray from um, if they're following along with the track. So um, I thought Robert played well again. I could I didn't uh, I didn't care for the annoying fan noise in the background. Um, solo was okay by Pete in the middle, but uh, I would say a pretty standard version of the song. Um, Five fifteen. Um, I think one of the stronger songs in the album, just energy wise. I thought if if I was la- if I if I felt there was lacking of energy in any of the other songs, this one definitely was not one of those. Uh, Zach's incredible. Pete's sharp on his guitar again. I hate the woohoo guy in the background. <laughs> um, Pete has a good solo. Uh, and then John, you know, shows he's the best bass player in the world uh, with his. 
I mean, no one else could do what he does. Um, yeah, and then Pete finishes off with a really nice solo too, and you know, nice feedback, and goes right into you know just tearing it up. And such an underrated lead player, so um, this would be a really good version, a really good song to show to some or let somebody listen to to be like, hey, listen, all these guys are really, really fucking good at what they do. So, um, yeah, I, I, it was great, great version. Um, you know, this is this is the birth of the the thing. Not really the birth of it, but like, you know, in Quadrophenia, they gave him the bass solo during yeah. his tour of the 515. And you think to yourself, you know, through these little shining moments here of like Sparks in 89 or Dreaming from the Waste earlier, why haven't we gotten a bass solo earlier? Right. Do you know what I mean? And it was the worst when, when he first passed away because that's, I was shocked they did 515 um, after John passed away. I was shocked that that was on the first show they they did afterwards mm -hmm. yeah um, because it comes such a major point to even like the later quadrophenia tour they had him do it you know they yeah. had the camera and him doing it from the 2000 Albert hall concert uh this is my favorite tone for that solo this is one of my favorite solos of that solo um i'm so glad that there's a 515 bass solo yeah yeah it's like uh when you when you want to this is the one i play for people this is you know, if I say, well, this is what was going on here, it's it's this bass solo. Agreed. Yep. Um, and then uh, I think it goes right into another lesser known song that Betz will talk us talk to us about. Oh, won't get fooled again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. won't get fooled <laughs> again. What's that one? That's a new one. It's a it's an obscure one. I think it was on Odds and Sods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um. Uh, this is what, you know, uh, we can talk for hours about won't get fooled again, whatever. I, for me, I want to big props to Zach because adding that guy to the band was like a shot in the arm for those guys. And when I saw him in 2000, again, I, I can't say enough, one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, and all props to Zach for that, man. That kid brought in some new energy. It was like putting a GTO engine into a Rolls Royce. And he plays his heart out. He's the best Keith Moon style drummer since the last Keith Moon style drummer. Um, yeah. But he really makes this, he makes this whole show go, I think. And so, you know, kind of underrated player there, but that kid's got it and really great. And yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. And Pete was uh, playing along with a little, trying to do the uh, guitar thing along with the synth thing at the end. And I think he stopped yeah. doing that again. Um, so yeah. that was interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So take us home, Beth. Kids are all right. My generation. Okay. Kids are all right. My generation. It, it was kids are all right. Is so sweet. So this was kind of a nice little ending, um, kind of a back to our roots kind of thing. Um, it's, it's just a really sweet kind of song. And then it goes into my generation and, and this version of my generation is punk as you know, um, they're just wilding out. And I know a lot of people get a lot of, you know, oh, these old men, they're singing my generation, you know, hope I dug for a good old, like, what are you talking about? Um, I love that they end, they ended um, their show in 2000 with my generation too. And I loved it because it's sort of like saying, we're, we're older, you're older, um, that we can all, we all still relate to this song in some way. This is like our anthem. Um, and we joked in 2000 at the end of it because they went kind of like here they went into this sort of extended thing at the end um and my friend and i were talking about you know it was like go home to your kids pay the babysitter kind of thing <laughs> but mm -hmm. it, this they really really just tore up the stage with my generation and it's a great way to end the show and i don't care how old they are you know play it all you want dudes because we'll be here for it every time um i really like this kids all right because you can see what it's going to become later on yeah it becomes yeah. A, lo a much longer song with a lot a lot bigger coda on it and yeah. of course we end with my generation which is you know a song written by the by pete townsend so i enjoy it yeah <laughs> <laughs> tom anything on the end here yeah i mean kids are all right I, you know one of my top three who songs ever i think and i really love it and it's a good version um, and like you said, you can see where it's going to head, uh, how they play it live. So, um, yeah, just a treat to hear it all, always. And, 
yeah, my generation is, it's, it is what it is. It's so good. You know what I mean? And it's, it's good to hear it live and you'll never not be upset. You'll, yeah. You'll never not be upset hearing it. And I think they tried at the Who Hits 50 tour not to play it for a couple shows and they got so much crap. Yeah. They had to play it. <laughs> so, um, so overall thumbs up. I'm giving it a thumbs up. I, I mean, I like it very much. Um, it's not live at Leeds by any stretch. Um, but that's not what I'm looking for when I listen to this. No, you know no. What I mean, and uh, I don't think uh, after the fire would have sounded good on live at Leeds. So yeah. um, that's where I am with that. Yeah. Cool guys. Well, that's it for this yeah. edition of us, and um, we'll be back hopefully uh, soon with something else. Getting gearing up. We got concerts soon. Uh, Bet's your concerts like a month and a half away. In the April. In the April. I can't wait. I. I'm so stoked. So stoked. Going with my best friend. I'm probably going to cry the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to be crying. <laughs> and uh, Tom, ours, we got ours at the end of May, right? May 20th, yep. May 20th. Man, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. We got. I got to look at those. I got to look at those fall shows. I don't know what's going on with those yet. There's got to be something <laughs> happening. All right, guys. Thank you for coming. And hey, everyone, if you're still watching this, thank you so much for coming. And um, we'll see you uh, next time. Bye. I see you.